Welcome to the National Wildlife Federation's third annual Campus Chill Out Awards. I'd like to begin by thanking all of you, especially the students and faculty on our nation's campuses, for coming together to meet the challenge of the climate crisis. And I want to thank you for your efforts to provide meaningful solutions to global warming. And I'd like to especially thank the host of today's broadcast, the National Wildlife Federation, and the other key partners of this contest. Today, we recognize six outstanding campuses and their contributions to a variety of creative solutions to the global climate crisis. Chill Out remains the nation's only campus competition to promote sustainability and to honor the efforts of students, faculty, and others who are reducing our country's carbon footprint. And leading our way to a clean, just, and prosperous energy future. How wonderful to be virtually here with you to honor the youth of America who are making such a difference. The impressive changes our winners are implementing have influenced us all. And as part of our pledge to action in reducing our carbon footprint, even this broadcast itself utilized cutting edge green technologies. National Wildlife Federation's goal for society and for higher education is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. That's gonna be hard, but it is doable if everyone works together and uses innovation. It's a lot, we have to do it and we can achieve reductions by starting with simple actions like lowering the thermostat or changing incandescent light bulbs. But this call for action and this year's winning campuses go way beyond small steps. Heeding the world's top scientists who warned that unchecked global warming will trigger a potential cascade of negative consequences, today's honorees are taking bold actions now that can lead us to a sustainable future and a smaller carbon footprint for everyone. Students on today's campuses are helping to lead the way now and will soon be the leaders in business and government who are called on to address this ongoing worldwide threat. The National Wildlife Federation has the largest U.S. member base of any conservation organization. With more than four million members and supporters, we are confronting global warming, protecting and restoring wildlife habitat, and connecting people of all ages with nature. Like it or not, global warming will be the defining issue of the 21st century. Global warming is probably the most significant environmental issue we've ever faced. The National Wildlife Federation is very concerned about the impacts on fish and wildlife of global warming and on their habitats because millions and millions of acres of wildlife habitat could be lost forever. The collective voice of our constituency is forcing our nation's political leaders to step up and develop legislation that will address the impacts of global warming, giving wildlife a fighting chance. For more than 70 years, the National Wildlife Federation has been a leader in environmental education and advocacy. The loss of sea ice is already causing polar bears to drown, and in some cases for the populations of polar bears to decline. Polar bears rely on sea ice for the hunting of seals. Without sea ice, they just can't hunt. We can't wait another generation to do this. We need to do it now because if we wait any longer, this dude's going to drown. And you don't want that to happen, do you? No, we don't. If we stop using as much energy from coal-fired power plants and instead turn to alternative energy sources, we reduce the mercury contamination which goes into our environment and accumulates in fish, making them unsafe to eat. Through education and advocacy, National Wildlife Federation is putting the reality of climate change and its consequences at the forefront of the American agenda. We are advancing bold solutions that will end our national addiction to fossil fuels, and open the door to new technologies for cheaper, cleaner, and safer energy supplies. Working together, we can and we must stop global warming. The greatest gift we can give our children and their children is a healthy planet. National Wildlife, Wildlife Federation's mission is to protect, protect wildlife, wildlife for our, our children's, children's future. future. And with your help, we can solve the climate crisis. Woohoo! <laughs> Where are you going? Please help. During this webcast, we will announce the campus winner with the most registrations at campuschillout.org and they will receive a free concert with the steps live. So stay tuned. And chill out. Yeah, chill out. Okay. I've been telling you, it's not enough. 
Hey, ¿qué pasó? This is Jose Yenke, and National Wildlife Federation wants you to tune in and chill out. This year's chill out competition included a video contest hosted by GoGreenTube.com. And for each video watched by a logged in user, one pound of CO2 is offset by a carbon credit. Congratulations to this year's video winners. Longwood University in Farmville, Virginia is a public state institution with about 4,500 students. Our current steam plant burns sawdust purchased from local sawmills to provide 80% of the campus's heat and hot water. In 2010, a new plant will provide 100% of our heat and hot water using this carbon neutral fuel. 150 geothermal wells under Eiler Field support the heating and cooling of the adjacent Doral Dining Hall. Press boxes at the athletic fields are recycled shipping containers costing 42% less than alternatives. Trailless dining reduces food waste by approximately 2 tons a month. At Longwood University, being sustainable means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Welcome to UC San Diego. The future of sustainability is already here. More than 50 years ago, UC San Diego scientist Charles David Keeling warned the world about the threats of global warming. In 2007, our scientists shared the Nobel Peace Prize with Al Gore. We're used to leading. Who else is going to create the future? At UC San Diego, we divert 13,000 tons of waste every year and our reduced energy use saves $12 million a year. We're planting solar trees that will produce one and a half million kilowatt hours of energy a year. At UC San Diego, we basically live at the beach. See all that water out there? We're figuring out ways to use that to cool our campus buildings. Seawater air conditioning will save 100 million gallons of potable water each year. And then there's pond scum. While well, others see corn-based ethanol as solving our fuel problems. Driving up grocery prices? Who needs that? Or in the lab working with simple algae to create advanced biofuels. Pond scum can save the world. Our campuses are like small cities, and they can be models of innovation for everyone to follow. Like these guns. Right here. Last year's winning schools saved approximately $5 million annually and remove 20,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. That's 40 million pounds! Emissions reduction at the winning schools was equivalent to planting 6,900 acres of trees or removing 4,600 cars from the road. Chico State is really blessed because we have a huge student movement on our campus. We used our campus cafeteria waste oil and our biodiesel processor to produce biodiesel fuel for use in our university farm tractors. By capturing the waste vegetable oil here on campus, we were able to cut down on the waste stream generated from the campus. View College has been a leader in sustainability since the main campus opened in the 1970s. We've made modeling sustainability one of our five strategic initiatives. We believe as an educational institution we have a responsibility uh, to ensure that our students understand about concepts of sustainability. So today's program is going to be very exciting and continues our tradition of recognizing and celebrating innovative solutions to global warming on our nation's campuses. Tune in and chill out. Tune in and chill out. Planet Green is happy to partner with National Wildlife Federation to bring climate change education and solutions to campuses across the country. The scientific consensus is daunting. It isn't easy, and we are not talking about small tweaks such as bamboo flooring or low VOC paints. Which are all really important. But rather, we are talking about significant shifts away from fossil fuel towards cleaner, safer, greener forms of energy, cleaner transportation systems, more sustainable buildings, community design, and more. And more. Congratulations are in order. The state of California has partnered with Sun Edison to provide affordable solar power at 15 CSU campuses and the CSU executive office. The California State University system is the largest public university in the nation and we felt it our responsibility to take a leadership role for a long time uh, to reduce our environmental impact and reduce our uh, energy cost expenditures and do it all in an, an economically responsible way. The campuses, in fact the whole CSU system, uh, developed a, 
an agreement with the State Department of General Services uh, to develop a power purchase agreement with Sun Edison. Any campuses that wanted to participate could sign up for the program and Sun Edison would design, build, and maintain the photovoltaic systems for a period of 20 years at a, uh, an agreed upon price to the campuses throughout that 20 years. And then once that 20 year lease agreement was up, the campuses have the opportunity to purchase said equipment at whatever that particular current market value would be. The public-private partnership will create a zero emission, eight megawatt solar photovoltaic power system to help power the universities. It's enabled us to reduce our carbon footprint by 10,000 metric tons per year. Which is equivalent to removing 48,934 cars from the road. The program has resulted in our ability to exceed our 2014 renewable goals of having 10 megawatts of uh, renewable energy on our campuses and we're actually getting closer to 15 uh, well before that 2014 deadline. Not only is solving the climate crisis good for the planet, but we can create two million jobs by investing in clean energy. I'm Courtney Gaines and the National Wildlife Federation wants you to tune in and chill out. Climate Counts is a nonprofit campaign that scores and ranks the world's companies on whether they're taking climate change seriously. Visit climatecounts.org and learn how you can vote with your dollars every day to make climate change history. Tune in and chill out at campuschillout.org. CSU's Northridge 1 megawatt fuel cell power plant is the largest installation at any university in the world. The fuel cell project started as a state incentive uh, grant with a one-year construction time frame and Cal State Northridge took this as a student, faculty and staff project. Installing the fuel cell on campus is a really great thing because what it does is it allows us to generate clean energy in a way that's much more efficient than the standard coal burning operation of generating electricity. The plant actually has a combined heat and power efficiency of over 60 percent because we capture much of the heat in the exhaust in water which is then fed back into the campus energy system. This ultra clean plant produces 18 percent of the campus's bathe slowed electricity. And this was a total in-house development under the leadership of the ex-vice president of administration and finance, Dr. Mo Kiyomi, and the executive director of physical plant management, Mr. Tom Brown. Uh, they inspired us, they got the faculty, students, staff on board and made this project happen. Fuel cell technology is actually something that's been around a little while, but this is actually the largest installation of fuel cell technology at any university in the world. And thanks to the combined heat and power application, electricity is produced to double the efficiency of the nation's electrical grid. With the green movement and sustainability awareness and uh, things that are out there now, it's even that much more important for students to get involved on their respective campuses and learn about ways to really help the environment through projects and initiatives and even initiate things on their respective areas to do that. Woo! Hey everybody, I'm Johnny Appleseed, spokesman of the Green Train, and with the National Wildlife Federation, we want you to tune in and chill out at campuschillout.org. Stonyfield Farm has set aggressive goals for reducing its yeah. impacts on climate change throughout its operation. Since 1997, Stonyfield Farm has also offset 100% of its CO2 emissions from its facility energy use. We followed sustainable filmmaking guidelines and added a few fun new twists. We used the RED camera, a 4K camera system that is filmless and tapeless, cabling directly into a hard drive. Not only is that super cool, but it means that we are not contributing wasted film, tape, or chemicals to landfills. Transportation in this country accounts for 29% of our emissions. So if you can, walk, or take your bike, or take the bus. Congratulations, Humboldt State University. Unlimited ride bus passes for all HSU students. Funded by a $15 student fee, were implemented by campus-wide student vote in 2007. So Jack Pass is a, it's a universal bus pass for students. Jack Pass is a really cool program because it came from the students here at Humboldt State. What we advocated for was a bus pass for students uh, that basically provides students with unlimited rides on the regional bus system um, for a $15 fee that, that all students pay each semester. 
Um, what's great about the Jack Pass is that it hooks up with a lot of other county bus systems. So you can actually travel quite a way on the county buses here. We get a bus pass that goes all the way to Scotia, which is about 35 miles south, and all the way up to Trinidad, which is about 20 miles north of us, and we can use it all throughout those different areas. So the Jack Pass helps in a couple ways. It helps get students access to the campus, but it also alleviates the issue of parking on our campus. The Redwood Transit Service announced a 30% increase in ridership, and the campus parking and commuter services recorded a decrease of over 30% in parking pass sales, even as enrollment increased. Just in the last couple years, we've noticed several hundred parking spaces opening up during the course of the day that were always jammed every day. And in our landlocked campus, where we've got the redwood trees we want to preserve to the east and the boundary with the, the city right to our west, we really had no room to add parking. When students start to get together and they do programs for clean water, they do programs to cut back electricity use, they do programs for anything to save the environment, it's going to be noticed. Right now, this year, in a year and a half, we're celebrating over half a million Jack Pass rides. And that just rocks because it's a student program. Take public transportation, people. It's not that hard. It's super easy, and you never know who you can meet on the bus. The nation's two-year and four-year colleges and universities have a measurable impact on the U.S. economy and its greenhouse gas emissions. Oh. Collectively, they spend over $360 billion oh. annually and hold roughly the same amount in endowment investments. Big impact, people. Tune in and chill out. Record label playing in traffic and their up and coming band The Steps have partnered with Chill Out to help educate the average college student about the environment. Tune in! Chill, chill out. out! In 2007, as a result of student activism, the Board of Trustees of Middlebury College set an ambitious goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2016. The biomass gasification project is a real milestone in Middlebury's efforts to become carbon neutral by 2016. The biomass facility was actually a student-led carbon reduction initiative that developed four or five years ago in an effort to reduce our carbon footprint. The campus won't be fully sustainable until the student body starts making more environmentally conscious decisions themselves. And this is a great example of Middlebury saying we are an environmental leader. We have incorporated this incredible environmental studies program into our curriculum. But how can we really go even further? Burning biomass is carbon neutral because the process releases the same amount of CO2 that plants absorb while growing. I think that having this big open biomass plant in the middle where everyone walks by pretty much every day really created a huge impact saying, you know, Middlebury, we're really taking the step toward carbon neutrality. We've been able to displace a million gallons of our number six fuel oil, or about half our number six fuel oil, and replace it with a renewable fuel, which is wood chips. After the first year of operation, which we, we are now in, uh, we should reduce our emissions by about 40 percent and achieve that goal that we set in 2004 ahead of schedule. We are doing a pilot project to see if it's feasible to grow willows on the college land. It would allow us to have wood chips that we grow in a, a renewable cycle. Well, it's great to get the recognition of the NWF's Chill Out Award. It, one, it makes, it sends the message to students who are interested in sustainability and climate change and related issues that this is a place where that interest is going to be served. We used light panels, LED lighting system, saving the planet from harmful incandescent bulbs. And we powered our lights in production with solar energy. <laughs> Thanks to solar generator provided by Pure Power Distribution. This unit charges at about 2,500 watts an hour. The energy from the light, the photons, is what's causing in the silicon the creation of electricity that's then gathered here. Through a little panel here, and then it's taken through the wires to a charge controller and an inverter, and it goes through the charge controller into a battery. Well, you can see the batteries. It's a pretty substantial storage system. It should last uh, 12 to 18 hours. So if, if you have somebody that takes a calculator out and does the calculations of what they're plugging into it, you can figure out how to run an entire production in 
entire concert, an entire event with solar and make, you know, no pollution, no noise, pure sine wave power, it's great stuff. And a portable solar capturing tent from FTL Solar. If you're in your production, or doing your event, or doing your farmer's market, or at the military base, this shield, right, where all these little black panels, line the whole tent. It's collecting all of the sun rays, and it takes the energy from the sun and goes down that little wire into that white big battery. And then, with that battery, you run your production. You run your whole craft service. I'm Michael Welch with the National Wildlife Federation and we want you to tune in and chill out. Every year Kaplan prepares the next generation of leaders for standardized tests to gain admission to their target colleges. Graduates and professional schools, it's going to take all of us to build America's future as a low carbon society. And Kaplan does its part by helping his students build their future as the nation's next doctors, lawyers, teachers, actors, entrepreneurs, engineers, and many must. Ah, muchísimo más. Which means more. Yeah. Colleges and universities manage more than 5 billion square feet of space. And spend more than 18 billion annually on energy cost. Two A donor provided 10,000 compact fluorescent light bulbs, CFLs, for exchange. Oberlin College has been a leader in sustainability and promoting carbon neutrality. The Light Bulb Brigade was a really neat project that we conducted here at Oberlin College that involved students, faculty, uh, members of the administration, and townspeople. Um, the Light Bulb Brigade itself started with 10,000 light bulbs that were received from an anonymous donor. Student organizers and faculty worked with students in an introductory environmental studies course to design CFL exchange programs, emphasizing exchanges for lower income community members because this group spends the largest percentage of their income on utility costs. I mean, basically our, our tagline is like save energy, save money. We were charged with dispersing them by creating five student groups to reach different populaces. So we had a group that was going into dorms and exchanging in dorm rooms, a group that exchanged with Oberlin College employees. Uh, we had two groups that were going into the community, and we had one group that went into the public high school where they did an educational component and then exchanged with students and their parents. We weren't just giving away light bulbs and um, getting carbon offsets. We were also helping educate people about sustainability. In addition, the compact fluorescent light bulb lasts a lot longer than the incandescent bulb. So although there's more energy that goes into making a compact fluorescent bulb, over the lifespan of the bulb, it ends up saving an enormous amount of energy. We saved 6,400 tons of carbon from being emitted into the atmosphere. Or enough to offset the emissions from college transportation for over two years. We went into over 650 residences and reached approximately a quarter of the non-student population of the city of Oberlin. And, uh, and saved community members about uh, $715,000. I think it's extremely important that colleges and universities be at the forefront of sustainability and environmental responsibility. This is Isaac C. Singleton, Jr. telling you to tune in and chill out. Green Means Go is a celebrity campaign sharing solutions for greener living and salutes this year's Campus Chill Out winners. Green Means Go. Green Means Go! Green Means Go! <laughs> Woo! I mean, we're creating the environment that our children and our grandchildren are going to live in. I really believe in having a green lifestyle. Keep in, when you leave the house, make sure you shut out the lights. Don't leave any lights on. Right People here. are going to rob you. They're going to rob you if the lights on or off. Hurry it doesn't up. matter. Black. Save all the energy you can. Leave right. stuff on standby. Don't leave the lights on. You know, if you do things like have solar panels that create your own electricity, the electricity goes into the grid. And if you have a surplus of energy that month, you actually get a check from the electric company. I am, I'm hybrided up. My entire family drives hybrids. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I'm not Ed Bagley Jr. <laughs> who's one of my heroes. You get your habit, you know what I'm saying? It's going down. Might be a little expensive on the top end, man, but you're saving in the long run. Yeah. Green. Shower with less water if possible. We'll Don't wash your clothes there. unless you have like an entire load to wash. Say it. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reuse. Recycle. 
Yeah, see that two times fast. Well, you should always recycle all your goodies in your house. So I do that, bottles and cans, toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, all those sort of things. I'm the one running around going, no, 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 no. Paper and plastic and glass goes here. If we were all immediately aware of what our impact was on the environment around us, we would all conserve a lot more because we don't have as much as we think we do. Green means go. Tune in, chill out! A very special congratulations to our grand prize winner, the Massachusetts Maritime Academy. 53% of our student population are engineers, and they're in the engineering business after they graduate, including power generation. And we want it to be in the forefront of renewable, clean, green energy. My campus has installed a wind turbine, photovoltaic cells. We're about to put in geothermal in our new library, and the next big frontier for us is going to be hydrokinetic. The Academy has a dozen projects installed and exciting new projects coming up. The two things that you see behind me are a vertical axis wind turbine and a tidal turbine that students have designed, built, and tested in my class. We built a tidal turbine uh, with the idea of generating electricity from the current flowing in the canal. Any propeller rotation that we get we're going to get 40, more, or 40 times more RPMs going to the generator to produce our electricity. I believe it's very important to address the issue of climate change because this is our environment and we are the future, so it should be dealt with now. Energy conservation is more about using energy wisely than it is about saving a few kilowatt hours here or there. Energy conservation is about eliminating waste and using our energy resources the best we can. The Academy reduced consumption of non-renewable energy with building and mechanical efficiencies by generating renewable energy through its lead by example sustainability initiative. This vertical axis wind turbine was a study to see if smaller turbines could be used to generate smaller amounts of energy. I think we send out uh, young minds who know that wind turbines aren't bird cuisinards. They know they don't make noise. They know they don't interfere with cell phone reception. Um, that base knowledge on experience will translate in the future to more support for renewable energy efforts. Everybody on campus uh, has a feeling that we're doing something to be a greener school, a greener campus, uh, and doing our part. In total, I think it has been the students that have helped us push this clean, green revolution. I'm Ethan Gold, and I'm asking you to tune in and chill out. Together, the National Association for Campus Activities, Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education, Energy Action Coalition, National Teach-In, Earth Day Network, and Focus the Nation, all come at the youth climate movement in different ways, engaging students, faculty, staff, and community members at every level to take bold action towards a sustainable and clean energy future. We also munched on organic craft services brought to us by the amazing Green Truck. We're at the campus chill out contributing to um, a zero carbon footprint with our vegetable fuel catering truck. We use our used fry oil to motor the truck. So when you order fries or a falafel from Green Truck, you're helping fuel Green Truck down the road. And it's green. Green Truck does everything from motion pictures, uh, print work. College campuses too, USC, UCLA. Eco events, and we've come in and bring them custom organic catering. Our carbon footprint is very, very low. We don't use any foreign fossil fuels to operate our business. It either runs on used vegetable oil or solar power. Today we're plugged into a solar grid around the corner as well. Serviceware, our plates, our napkins, yeah, biocompostable, made from potatoes. We have some with you wheat. can eat it if you're Wheatware. hungry. We use corn cups and filtered water. Compost, no landfill, no plastic. We also use these really cool bottles from Bottleless instead of using plastic water bottles. These bottles are made of stainless steel. If it's clean, there's no runoff. GMO, chemical, plastic, anything in the water. It's just clean stainless steel, NSF grade, inspire you to keep your water bottle on you instead of contributing to landfill and plastics. And even use teleprompters made from recycled materials. Pretty cool, huh? 
and to make up for any trucks that had to bring in our food and equipment from around the country just to get to us. So we bought carbon credits to offset any carbon trace of our production. National Wildlife Federation would like to recognize our production partners on the 2009 Chill Out Campus Awards, Mundo Maravilla and the Brook Turn Company for their services to America's conservation organization. Mundo Maravilla and the Brook Turn Company first partnered in 2008 with the Vote for Change video postcard campaign directed by artist Shepard Ferry and filmmaker Melissa Ballin resulting in over a million downloads and the unprecedented election of the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama. We believe the restructuring of America's economy depends on a transition to clean energy. Both Mundo Maravilla and the Brookturn Company have taken the Chill Out Pledge to action to reduce our carbon footprint. Mundo Maravilla believes in providing opportunities that honor people of diversity and the Brookturn Company attaches a nonprofit initiative to every media project. Tune in and chill out. Congratulations to the University of Illinois at Chicago. You're our lucky winner and will receive a concert by the steps live at your campus. What an inspiration these students and faculty members are. National decision makers are taking notice of the public demand for solutions to the climate crisis, thanks in part to the broad national campus and youth initiatives such as PowerShift and the National Teach-In earlier this year. The United States colleges and universities are amongst the wealthiest in the world and are recognizing more and more that higher education institutions bear a profound responsibility to lead. Young people are engaged and impassioned over this issue because, well, our future is at stake. But we know that young people alone can't solve this problem. Young, old, faculty, staff, or student, we can all learn from the lessons presented by these campuses, extending them to our homes, schools, places of worship, and beyond. Go to campuschillout.org and tell your member of Congress that we need bold legislation on climate change now. And we need to put a national system in place to regulate greenhouse gas pollution, just as we have done successfully with other forms of pollution in the past. Okay, what are you waiting for? Go to campuschillout.org right now. Take the pledge to action on your campus. You'll be entered to win a free Kaplan test prep course. Oh, that's good. And we'll be the first to yeah. hear about Chill Out 2010. This year's winners eliminated more than 21,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's the same as planting 8,400 acres of trees. So go to campuschillout.org. We all need to take big steps now to make a smaller carbon footprint for everyone. This is a time of big ideas and big changes. It's a time for new energy and a whole new American industry. Most importantly, it's a time for action, and you are at the heart of it all. What you've made happen on your campuses is something that you can now take out into your communities. And if it happens in your communities, then we can join together to make it happen all across the country. And if we can do that across the country, then we know that we can make it happen all over the world. That's how a movement starts. We have a chance right now to turn the tide on climate change, to build a clean energy future, and to save our planet. I hope you'll keep pushing to green your schools, your homes, and anywhere else you go. The EPA is going to be right there with you. Thank you so much. Thanks again for tuning in. Roll end credits. Roll end credits. End credits. End. I'm Lawrence Bender. National Wildlife Federation acknowledges this year's Chill Out College Campus winners. Go to campuschillout.org to learn how campuses across the country are taking necessary steps to confront global warming. This year's winners eliminated more than 21,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's the same as planting 8,400 acres of trees. Together, these campuses demonstrate that we can confront global warming, protect wildlife habitat, save money, and create jobs with new technology all at the same time. So join us, National Wildlife Federation, it's four million members and a host of supporters and volunteers at campuschillout.org. We all need to take big steps now to make a smaller carbon footprint for everyone. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>